Hey, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein, and today we're going to go through the new California filing system for how to form a corporation. It's the same process if you want to end up with an S Corp or a C Corp. You form the corporation with your state, in this case with the state of California, and then you pick whether or not you want an S Corp or a C Corp with the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, which under, is under the federal government. So let's get into it. First thing you need to do is to go to the BizFile online system with California. You can go there directly, which I'll have a link below in the descriptions or in the comments, or you can go to sos.ca.gov where you click on business and then the BizFile online should be there for you to click. So when you get to the BizFile online system, it's right now it has a little alert that says to file something, you have to create a login. Creating a login is very easy. You click on the login button. I obviously already have a login as a lawyer, but if you don't have one, you just sign up by clicking at the very bottom. You create an account by giving them an email, a password, your first and last name. It's very simple. They'll send you an email that you have to like confirm your email address. So let's say you have that done, you have your login, then you're gonna go ahead and sign in. Now, once you sign in, if you've ever done any other filings, they'll be under your records on the left side. If you have anything pending, it'll be under your work queue. But let's say this is the first time you've ever come here and you're creating your brand new corporation, your S Corp or C Corp, you go under forms. Under forms, there can be name reservations, which is if you want to just reserve the name. This is not required. You do not need to do this if you're going to go ahead and form the corporation right now. But let's say you wanted it, you're forming a corporation, you're not quite sure if the name is going to be approved because there's something a little bit unique about it, or you want to reserve the name now because you don't know when you're going to create it. You don't want someone else to take the same name. That's what you do the name reservations for. Otherwise, you just go ahead and form the corporation. So you go down here a little bit to stock corporation initial filings. And the very first one is for a general stock corporation. The other ones are for other situations, obviously. If you're converting, which means you're moving your corporation from another state, if you're creating a different type of corporation, a benefit corporation, a closed corporation, social purpose, professional, if you're insurance, uh, if you're doing a registration of out-of-state corporations, these other filings are here for those purposes. But today we're just gonna form a regular corporation. So you click on this and it tells you that the filing fee is gonna be $100. Just gonna give you a warning. Okay, so the first is thing that you're gonna to come to is the privacy warning and terms and conditions of using this website. One of the big things to be aware of is that any information you put in this filing is going to be available to the public. So specifically, the big thing is the address that you're going to put in here. So if you use an address that's your home address that's publicly available, regardless of what address you use, you can get spam mail <laughs> if you use it. So just something to be aware of so you're not surprised later. Then it goes through your terms and conditions of use that you know you should always read these things before you agree to them. I obviously have gone through it already. So I'll scroll all the way to the bottom and you have to click that you've read and agreed to it. The next step is the submitter. The submitter is the human person who's filing this. So it could be you if you're filing it, if your accountant is filing it, they would put that in there if you're lawyer, etc. You don't have to put who's the person who is submitting this. I think it's a good idea because if something is messed up, they have an email address and a phone number they can contact. I've never had the state uh, phone me, but this system has only been up for a week. So they, I could see them sending an email. Historically speaking, they only sent things in the mail. So we'll see what happens. I haven't had anything get rejected yet, so I don't know if they were actually going to use this. There we go. All right. Next step is the corporation name. If you have reserved a name, you click that here, but let's say we have not. So the corporation name is going to need to have corporation or incorporated or something like that after it. So let's say we're going to do Potts, Weinstein, and Consulting International um, Incorporated. It's a weird name, but so we have to put it in here twice. They actually do let you cut and paste it, which is nice. They're going to check that it's probably not taken, or at least it's the same thing in both. I'm not 100% sure what they're checking. Then you put in your, so you have your initial street address of the principal office of the corporation. If your company is actually located somewhere else in a different state, this can be a different state. The initial mailing address could be a PO box. It's where you want to get mail. Let's put in, okay, so I put in my address, then I can click on this and I can copy it so I don't have to keep retyping it over and over. You used to have to type things over and over again. 
are we going to name the directors? You do not have to name the directors at this point. You can do it later when you file your statement of information. So let's just not do that now. We don't need to. The agent of service for process. This is your registered agent. This is a human person or a other business entity who can accept legal documents on behalf of your corporation. So it could be you yourself, you the human person, but it can't be the corporation itself. The corporation itself can't accept legal documents on its own behalf for these purposes. In some states, I think you actually can do that, but not in California. You can have another entity that you pay to do be the registered agent. So Northwest Registered Agent Service is a lot, one that I recommend for a lot of people. They're going to charge you an annual fee of between $100 and $300, depending upon which one you use. So here, I'm going to just say it's me. And I'm going to put same address. I can copy the address over. Simple. All right. So how many shares of the corporation is authorized to issue? This is the stock. What stock are you going to be giving out to people? Now, if it's just you who own the business, it's just you. So you could put in any number here, not zero, but you could put in a hundred, you could put in a hundred thousand. I mean, it's just, it's up to you. And I typically, when I'm forming companies, I just put 10,000 to have a big enough number. So you have room later. Do you have more than one class of stock? If you have more than one class of stock, you cannot be an escort. So more than one class of stock is typically bigger companies or people who are getting VC uh, venture capital where they want to have one class that has control over the day to day aspects of the business and another class of stock where they only are passive investors or sometimes they'll be a preferred stock. The preferred stock gets paid out before common stock. For most of you, this is way more complexity than you need and you probably want to be an escort. So you're going to say no. Purpose statement. So it used to be that you had to say what the purpose of the corporation is going to be in a real specific way. You, this is like anything that's lawful. It can't be for, what is it, banking purposes, and it can't be a professional corporation because that's a different kind of corporation. I'll do another video about that. And then what's the filing date going to be? So most of the time it's going to be the current date. So if you're doing online filing, the file date, which is the date it's effective, the date your corporation starts is today. However, they might not look at your documents for a few days. A human person actually reviews everything and it may take them three to five business days. It may take them a couple of weeks if they're really backed up, but they'll backdate it to today if it gets approved. You don't always want that though. So let's say you're forming this corporation in December and you're not going to like start it tomorrow. Okay. You're planning to start it after the first of the year. Well, the thing is in California, there's a franchise fee minimum tax on every LLC or corporation of $800 a year. But under the current law, you get one for a year. The first calendar year, you don't have to pay the 800 bucks. So if you're filing this in mid-December, it makes sense to have the effective filing date be January 1st, for example, so that next year is your free year. For some of you, it doesn't matter. Like I'm doing this recording in April, so I'm just going to pick today. Attachments, I like never attached anything. <laughs> um, so uh, you probably won't need to either. Then you review everything and can sign it. So you have to scroll up and you can look at everything you put in here to make sure you spelled everything correctly, the address is correct. These are things that can be fixed later. You can change the name of a corporation later. You can update the address, but you don't want to have to deal with that if you can fix the typo. So let's assume everything's fine. Then how many signatures? Most of the time, it's just going to be you, one signature. So you do one signature by checking this box. I'm going to sign. You add your signature. I'm not sure if you're supposed to just put in your name or you're supposed to use little slashes. I've been using little slashes just in case that's what you're supposed to do. And you can put today or you can have a calendar. I don't think it makes any sense to pick a day other than today. I don't even understand how that would work, but there you go. You check the box to say that you're electronically signing it and everything is true and correct. Then you go to the next step. It's letting you know that the processing fee of $100. If you want a certified copy, it's $5. I recommend doing that because you might need a certified copy for the bank or some other purposes and you might as well get it now. So it's only $5. 
You can only pay for this with the Visa or a MasterCard, which is super annoying for me because I like to use American Express for all my business things. So I literally had to get a different credit card just to do my California filings on behalf of clients. And it's also reminding you about the $800 a year franchise fee. So you're not surprised about that later. Then you can choose what kind of service option it is. So typically, like I said before, it's going to take them three to five business days to uh, for a human person to look at it. It may be faster not than doing all the online filing. We'll see how it goes, but it may be longer, maybe a couple of weeks if they're really backed up, typically around the end and the first of the year, they get backed up. You can choose other expedited services, 24 hour expedited and same day but these have very strict requirements. So the same day, which is $750, you have to file it before 9.30 a.m. So I'm recording this at 9.54 a.m. It would be too late to get same day service. So that would be waste. 24 hour expedited service is if you file it now, it'll be done within 24 hours. So if I file it now, it'll be done tomorrow by you know 10 a.m. So most of the time you're not going to need this. It doesn't make any sense to spend that extra money. There may be very specific cases where you need this done. I can see one of them being, let's say you're buying a company and you need to set up a new company to transfer that old business into the new business and the closing date is tomorrow and you need this set up ASAP. There are situations where it makes sense, but most of the time you're just going to do standard. Then you go to the next step. This is where you hit the money button to file it and to pay. I'm obviously not going to do that because this is a fictional business. So I'm going to save the draft. Now, if you want to come back to it later, you can save your draft and you go to my work queue and it's in your work queue. You can see a bunch of things I have created for videos <laughs> for YouTube that are just pending drafts. And so I could click on this and make changes and then later submit it. Now to set up your corporation, there's a bunch of other things you're going to need to do. You're going to get an EIN. I've made a video about that. You're going to file a statement of information. I made a recent video about that. You're going to need to set up your bylaws and minutes and all that kind of stuff and your stock certificate, all those kind of paperwork things to establish your corporation. One of the things about a corporation is that it has a lot more paperwork than an LLC, the paperwork that's required versus an LLC. You need to have annual minutes for your annual meeting of your shareholders and, and your directors, which could be just you. So it's this ridiculous meeting you have with yourself where you take minutes about what you think with yourself. And you're also going to decide what kind of tax status is. You're going to be an S corp or C corp. The default is C corp. So you don't have to file anything with the IRS. You could just be a C corp. But if you want a different tax status, you want to be an S corp, you have to do a filing with them. And I've also done videos on all these different things. If you have any questions, about what we've done today, feel free to go ahead and leave them in a, in a comment below and I'll try to point you in the right direction. Thumbs up if you found this helpful. Subscribe for more videos like this. And if you'd like to help support the channel, I have started a Patreon where you also get more access to me and more information about maintaining your business. Thanks a lot for watching.